Here is a quick review on special right triangles. This video focusing on the 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. First, let's start with the right triangle. And the two acute angles are gonna measure 30 degrees and 60 degrees. As always, our hypotenuse is going to be opposite that 90 degree angle, that's always true. But our two legs are gonna be different lengths. One will be shorter than the other. And the shorter leg will be opposite the 30 degree angle because it's a smaller angle. And the longer leg will be opposite the 60 degree angle because it's bigger. Now, if we say our shorter leg is A units long, the longer leg will be eight times the square root of three units long, and the hypotenuse will be two A units long. Let's see if we can review why that is the case. We're going to start with an equilateral triangle, and I've dropped an altitude from one of the angles, um, and because it's equilateral, we're actually going to get two congruent triangles. So the altitude is also a perpendicular bisector. So if each side length of this equilateral triangle is 2a units long, what actually happens with that perpendicular bisector is the 2a is split in half so that on one side and the other side we're getting a units long. As you can see, we have two 30, 60, 90 triangles here. Let's just focus on one of those 30, 60, 90 triangles. Hopefully now we can see why that shorter leg opposite the 30 is A units long and the hypotenuse is 2 A units long. But what about our longer length? Well, we know two sides of a right triangle, so if you want to find that third side, you can use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's call that missing side B to be a variable that we have to solve for. Since I know A squared plus B squared equals C squared, let's solve that equation for B. First thing I want to do is subtract a squared from both sides. Gives me b squared equals c squared minus a squared. The next thing I'll do is take the square root of both sides, because I know what the square root of b squared is, it's b. So b will be the square root of c squared minus a squared. c is always the hypotenuse, and a is the other leg that we know. So let's substitute in the values we have, 2a and a. And we have 2a, that whole quantity squared, minus a squared under the radical. Be very careful squaring 2a squared because we want to square both of those factors. So 2a quantity squared is 4a squared minus that other a squared. A 4a squared minus an a squared, you're going to be left with 3a squared under the radical. And I know what the square root of a squared is, that's just a. And the square root of 3 is just the square root of 3. So b is a times the square root of three. And that's how we get the longer leg length to be a times the square root of three. Let's look at a few examples. My first example, I've got a 30, 60, 90, and I see one of the leg lengths is five. So let's label our sides. So the five is opposite the 30, it's the shorter leg, and the side opposite the 60 is the longer and hypotenuse across from the right angle. To get the hypotenuse, we do twice that shorter leg length. The shorter leg length is five, so five times two gives us a hypotenuse of 10. To find the longer leg, we just take the shorter leg and multiply by square root three, so the longer leg will be five times the square root of three. In our second example, this time one of my leg lengths is six, but look where it is, it's opposite the 60 degree angle. So six is a longer leg length, and I need to find the shorter leg and the hypotenuse lengths. So let's think about it. The shorter leg times the square root of three got me the longer leg. So to go back there, which is always where you wanna go, back to that shorter leg, you have to divide by the square root of three. But we have to be careful with that. I'm bringing up my scratch paper because six over the square root of three is dividing by an irrational number. So I'm gonna to need to rationalize uh, this fraction here. I'm gonna multiply by one, but a very special version of one the square root of three over the square root of three. Multiply my numerators, I'm gonna get six times the square root of three. If I multiply my denominators, I get three. And this can be reduced, six over three is two. My shorter leg is actually gonna be two radical three. Now once I'm back to my shorter leg, I get the hypotenuse by just doubling that shorter leg. So multiply that by two, you get four square root three. In our last example, 
I know the hypotenuse, the side opposite the 90. So again, let's label all our sides. Side opposite the 30 is shorter, and the side opposite the 60 is the longer leg. As always, you want that shorter leg. Go there first. Shorter leg times two is hypotenuse, so divide by two to get that shorter leg. Hypotenuse over two, 20 over two, shorter leg is 10. And once you have the shorter leg, you can find the longer leg by multiplying by the square root of three. So the longer leg will be 10 square root three. And there you have it. So if you know that shorter leg length, you can find the hypotenuse and the longer leg pretty easily. So the longer leg will be the shorter leg times the square root of three, and the hypotenuse will be the shorter leg times two. Now, if all you know is the longer leg, you want to go back to that shorter leg first by dividing by that square root three. The shorter leg is longer leg divided by square root three. And once you have that shorter leg, just multiply by two to get the hypotenuse. If you have the hypotenuse, again, go right back to that shorter leg. Shorter leg times two is hypotenuse, so divide by two to get the shorter leg. And once you've got that shorter leg, you just multiply it by the square root of three to get the longer leg. And that's really all there is to it. I hope this has been helpful to you, and thank you for watching.